Right. Uh, yeah, I think everything's okay. We've got more lights than Blackpool at the moment, if you know what, what that means. <laughs> Welcome to England. Um, any more lights? And I'll be draining the national grid. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm, I'm desperately trying to make it more. We've got daylight as well today, so I'm trying to desperately make it more detail. Um, or oh, a sharper image. Um, right, I'm going to talk about this. Thing. I'm going to draw this handsome chap. Uh, but the drawing of it is... Uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> looking at all the wires. The drawing of it is... Uh, I can't, I don't want to say it's the easiest thing, but the, the drawing of it, if I'm in full flow as, as I'm doing it now, it's, it's a little bit, um, it's difficult to sort of break it down basically uh, you know I, I can you if you see the dots i do the dots and you've seen me talking about rendering and everything else i i can just do another one of those um i can just do oh, here we go here's the dots and the dots and the dots and the dots not triangulation by the way <laughs> that's something else triangle the clue is in the title finding the distance between dots is what we're talking about because it's all about relationships um but as I said, I'm I'm going to talk about this um, this thing of doing it for the money. Um, it kind of strikes home to me because of being a designer for all that time, and you know, basically, that's doing you know being creative for money. And um, and the and the the illustrations that I used to do were for money. You know, so there was all kind of all kinds of. Um, parameters that were all kind of restrictions it had to be done you know forget about the the whether the client likes it or not or whether or not it's the right color and all the rest of it you've got all the other aspects of it's got to be done um within a you know practical um uh boundaries you know it had to be to a certain size it had to be on a certain material it had to, you know all kinds of of um constraints of which all of them revolved around if you didn't get it right, you didn't get paid. So there was that there, it's that right there. It was doing it for the money, imposes in a commercial sense, imposes the um a restriction on your creativity. Uh and so doing that for so long um resulted in me when I, mean, I couldn't really break away from it to be quite honest. When I first started you know, uh, painting and drawing, I couldn't really get away from there. Uh, doing it for money thing. Um, it was always about would it sell? Will it, will it sell? <laughs> will I be able to, you know, will, will somebody want this kind of thing? So you're second guessing, you know. Anyway, so what triggered all this was somebody said, was one of these channels that do the, you know, the uh, uh, the competition art thing, um, portrait thing, uh, that thing. But these, there are these channels that talk about it. You know, they talk about it. So I'll piggybacking on the back of it, I suppose, you know, to get the numbers. But... Um, I put on this that I didn't agree with it, and uh, and I thought that, you know, um, and I think that competitions are for athletes and not for artists. And uh, to which this person then came back at me, furious. You know, how dare you? This is a you know, well-renowned, renowned Duda, you know, and all that business. And she's she's given me what for, um, and I. Uh, uh, people have uh, uh, increased the profile and made lots of money, she said. So that's right there is the, you know, the, the tell right there of what this person's perspective on being an artist is. I mean, she goes on to say that if you don't make money, then you're not a professional. You know, again, this sporting, this sporting context, you know, uh, amateur professional. We're not boxers. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that, this is that natural amateur there aren't um, amateur professional uh, artists and there aren't professional artists. There are just artists. Yeah, this thing about if you don't get paid for it, then you're not a professional. What's all that about? Uh, you know, there's some people, some crazy ideas. Uh, you know, it's just beyond me. But the problem is people come to me and um, have got all this idea that it's uh, the value is based on what it will sell for or they fancy the idea of, of selling, you know, what they do. Uh, and all that kind of thing, and I, I just say go away. I, I, the thing is that you can't. 
you can't have a creative mindset that's geared towards selling um, because by its very nature, uh, creativity, whatever it might, um, uh, however it might manifest, isn't necessarily something that people, you know, the masses will want to buy. Um, that's not that's not the, uh, uh, the, the 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 name of the game. So if you want if you want if you want to do that, then by all means, do it. Try it. And I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't get paid for what you do. That's not doing it for the money. That's a different thing. Getting paid for making art, for creating something, or getting uh, or somebody buying your work is not doing it for money. That's a different thing. But this idea that you will do it for money, um, I mean, the intention of selling it, is the problem. Um, it's a problem. It's not a problem if you if you've been doing it for a long time and perhaps you're setting your ways, and and you know you've got yourself a niche and you know people always buy things in that particular color, so you're always painting that same color, you know, all that kind of thing. Which is another thing that someone years ago said to me, uh, an old artist, and he said, the worst thing you can do is be oblivious to your customers, to what your customers, who your customers are, because you've got to be really careful who buys your work, because when somebody um, once somebody buys your work, it becomes like some kind of embedded trigger. Oh, that sold last time. I'll keep doing that. You may not even be conscious of that. You know, maybe that might be a, a thing that you're, you're considering. But the, the thing is that once someone buys something from you, they, they're setting the the um, um, in your um, psyche. They're setting a parameter um, of this sells. You know that kind of thing. Um, and I mean, even Picasso made the plates because they're old. You know what I mean? So um, it's it's a very strange thing. It's a very strange thing. And I'm I'm for any, anybody who wants to uh, um, really sort of uh, um, get into uh, their uh, you know find their stride, find their you know their their self, and 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 really experience the creativity. Uh, you know their true creativity needn't really get embedded within the the whole idea of selling. Not early on. You're not strong enough to do that. I mean, I'm not really a, a fan of competitions, and I don't think that people should. As I said, they're for athletes, but I don't think people should do that either. Um, it just it's just a strange thing. I mean, I've even seen people talking about art battles, and that you know my first response is, what is it? Full contact or what? You know, you sort of rush around and stab them with the end of your brush, and then you rush back round again and then carry on painting. I mean, it's just, it's just this competition between artists thing is is what concerns me. But it's not. I mean, people do it, and it's you know, it's a thing. I know, but I um, I'm I'm wary of of how that impacts on your psyche because that's the thing. I mean, it's not at the end of the day, your psychological state is what drives your creativity, and if it's in some way. Um, distorted by this idea that it has to be done in a certain way in order to sell or oh, this is sold before so i'll carry on doing it this subject is you know all that kind of thing um you can do it if you're if you're established you can do it it's not a problem you're never gonna but you well, i'd always question now you're established if you are established based on this um assessments of what sells based on whatever criteria you know the fact that that the local craft fair one of these one of these these cat pictures sold uh, what how does that impact on your growth as a as a as an artist what does that do to your uh, approach in the way that you feel about what you do uh, and i say i'm not really and then you decide that you know that's all you ever do um and you see that all the time the amount of people say to me oh i can paint cats but i can't paint faces you know i can paint i can draw dogs i can't paint i can't draw faces now that right there is the issue this is what i'm trying to illustrate because uh, you should be able to draw anything. This is the this is the thing. It's not you know. And what context did you decide that you couldn't draw faces? Uh, by comparison, obviously. But that's 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 the, the, another one of the problems. Um, comparison is never the way to decide whether or not you've successfully done what you set out to do, or you've manifest your creativity in a you know a succinct way or whatever. Uh, comparison's never the judge. Um, and then, if you talk about comparisons and the 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 the, um, the problem with comparisons, what happens in a competition? Exactly, exactly. Competitions are 
co uh, com comparif comparisons manifest, you know, sort of. But it's um, but it's a thing, you know. Like this woman has said, oh, it's an established thing, and it's, and it's brought lots of um, uh, beginners to the, you know, to the to the portrait world and all that. It probably has, you know, it probably has. It's probably done more damage than good, but it's probably brought a lot more uh, people to the world of portraiture than than uh, than anything else, really. Um, uh, just because it's oh, some sort of the masters and it's dressed up and and it's all sort of prime time, you know. But uh, uh, the best way to, if you're a beginner, if you want to get into portraits, talk to a portrait artist, talk to the real people that do it. I mean, even the people that are on the show, I mean, they're they're some of them are fabulous, but but they you know they succumb to the the uh, the um, the bright lights. And uh, I uh, as I say I I got this thing about. Um, the 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 idea of doing it for money how it's going to permeate within your um uh, your creative um, expression how it's going to impact on your decisions to draw something or subjects or whatever i mean it's, it's hard enough deciding what to draw anyway um without the idea of oh well that one sold last time at so and so art fair you know so so it just makes it even more difficult you know um the, the the usual. I mean, she sent this thing back about the you know uh, artists being deluded and dreamers, and they think that it's not about the art world and not about the art business. And uh, and then and then to, when she said about the art business and the art world, I think what's that? What has the art world got to do with me? You know, so sort of, I'm not you know and business aren't the business of art? She said. <laughs> Ah, crikey. There's no wonder people struggle. There's no wonder people struggle at doing, you know, being creative. Because there's so many people willing to put um, uh, tethers to your, uh, to you and to, and to your, um, your um, endeavours. <laughs> to tether it to something that says, oh, oh, it's not that good because you couldn't enter a competition. There are people I know that have, entered, have tried to enter that competition. And I tell you, they are fantastic artists. They are, and I always say to them, you're too good. You're too good for that. I mean, they're down because they don't get picked or whatever. And and it just, it's, such a, it's so sad that when all of them, I mean, everybody that goes on that show, as far as I'm concerned, is a winner. I'm not, I'm not bothered what you think about it or what them bloody judges think because I have no idea where they're coming from. I used to like the guy, but I don't like him now because he, he said something about, um, you shouldn't show the uh, canvas through the, the paper because um, paint's cheap. You know, he said that's what he said. Well, come into my world, mate, and I'll tell you that I can't afford paint. There's many of us who can't afford to just slap paint around. So it was a bit, for me, it was a bit arrogant for him to say that, and I just sort of looked at him in a different light after that. But as I say, that's my personal response to the individual. But, um, um, I say that there are there are some great artists on that show. <laughs> there they are. I mean, every year, and I let them all win, you know. And there could be they, there's no reason why it couldn't be a showcase of great talent. It doesn't have to be a competition, does it? Um, the way that different artists treat different things and approach different subjects, it's just that it has to be a winner. It's that bad now that uh, there's a local art gallery thing that where I live, and they did a a. Um, uh, an exhibition and they had a judge and jury of uh, who was the best in the you know in the exhibition and we got these are just local people you know drawing sparrows on a log and all that kind of thing you know and fishes and, and little houses and what have you and then come, along comes this professional photographer who happened to win the thing who's been doing it for since uh, god was a boy and somehow his work got lumped in and so they had no idea about this idea of competition being you know um relevant at different levels it was just a case it was competition it, but it was and it i think they even used the title of you know the that's from the show and that just you know i said to the woman that i said i don't do that don't do all these other people these people that have really you know retired people that really put the heart and soul into this this whatever i say a sparrow on a log or whatever and they've been compared with a, a guy that's been doing for 30 years not right but as I said, it permeates between, into the sort of the psyche of the art world, <laughs> whatever that is. And um, 
and it just, as I say, it just it grates a little, especially when I, I you know I'm trying to get people to just enjoy this. Just, just you know, it's it's great fun without the without the you know the, all the, the rubbish of will it sell or won't it sell and all that kind of thing, um, because it, it, it's 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 going to stop you. You know, it's going to stop me. As I said, you might get to a point where you're completely um, cool with the idea of exhibit of competing, and uh, and you want to enter these competitions. Fine, but it takes some. It takes a while before you're in that position. I mean, I'd never enter a competition. I don't really care what people think about what I do. I can't, can I? I can't with my with my approach to this. I have no, I have no expectation. So if I don't care about how it's going to be then i'm certainly not going to care what you think about it so so that's that's the that's the sort of the the the, the zero expectation mindset and um it doesn't it doesn't really sit with the, the competition it wouldn't it wouldn't work if i said oh, i've got zero expectations and then oh by the way i'm entering a competition it's like a you know it's like a contradiction in a way um, but uh, it's the same with the, you know, the payment thing. I'm, I'm all for people being paid for what they do. I think this, you know, and, um, and generally people do not pay enough money uh, or enough full stop for uh, creative work, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but that's always been the case. Everybody undervalues creativity um, in business and in, in, um, in the, I was going to say amateur world, but I don't mean it like that. Um, but you know what I mean, whether it's business or not, we'll say that. Um, but it's just one of those things. But if you get paid for doing it, that's all well and good. Um, I'm, I have no problems with that. But I'm just, my problem is doing it specifically for money is the, is the thing that um, will um, impact on your approach. There's too many things. I, 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 as I said, I did it for, Oh, best part of 20 years it was designing and, and illustrating um although the illustrating was moonlighting it wasn't i did it through the agency where i worked but i, I was uh, moonlighting doing it as well so um so i know doing things for money what what doing things for money is is like uh and that's that's very commercial i went to paris and uh, i was talking to the guys that um um that were doing the portraits on the Montmartre and uh and they said what, what do you do and I said oh, I'm a uh, commercial artist and uh and oh boy well, they poo pooed me they thought that you know that, that I was the lowest in the low because because I did it for money because I was a commercial and then they sat there knocking out portraits like there's you know no tomorrow and telling me that I'm not I'm a commercial artist and, and and doing me down when really they were the ultimate commercial artist, but uh, yeah. So I, as I said, it's uh, it was um, it was a uh, it was probably the reason why I stopped when I when I came back from Paris. I thought right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a painter. Um, that was eighty eight and um, nineteen eighty eight, and uh, I. Uh, um, did all the you know gallery visits and all that kind of thing and got a portfolio together and you know and, and then and then went through the you know the ordeal of the uh, galleries because they're galleries and like you know, oh yeah that's a, that was a that was a tale in itself and uh, uh and then you know i i went i did this thing about um when i was knocking on doors <laughs> knocking on doors in Huddersfield and uh, and saying you want to buy a painting mate you know door to door painting sales and i even had an easel with me so i could i could put it in the front room so they could see you know put the easel in the front room, like a mini exhibition sort of thing so didn't get anywhere with that at all sunday morning walking around Huddersfield trying to do that was and getting getting doors slammed in your face like uh, you know like a hoover salesman and uh, not good very very much well, i've been used to that kind of treatment in the commercial world you know going to an agency and, and uh, showing your portfolio and then getting getting ripped to bits you know i've been used to all that and doing it myself i mean i used to do it with when, when we were employing young students we used to you know just dissect a portfolio um but that that was the 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 kind of um i suppose the tin lid on it really i at that point that was i can't do this kind of thing you know and that's why uh, I stopped. So I was in attempting to make it, to do it commercially. I even, one guy said to me, 
have you got any abstracts? And I said, no, but I will have tomorrow. And I went, I went, I went home. And I turned up the following morning with his abstract paintings and uh, he didn't buy any. But he was just trying to get rid of me, but didn't want me to do any, you know. So, um, but that was it. I, that was the thing. I went, I wanted to do it for the money, you know, pay the bills and all that. I mean, and if that's the case, just get a job. You know, I, this is what I did. So, um uh, it's it's not hard. it's not easy rather it's not easy at all but the problem is and the, the, this is the kind of the, the crux of why I stopped the problem is that if you succumb to the the idea that it's for money and uh, you're doing it because it sells it will ultimately drain your creativity it will it will take away whatever it is that you've got that makes you special will be tainted by this desire this overwhelming um, commercial uh, pressure thing, you know, the 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 art world, business world, whatever she called it, is that it will poison your creativity. Um, great artists, and I don't want to get sort of all Van Gogh about it, um, aren't primarily concerned with uh, making money, unless you're Damien Hirst, obviously. But um, but the thing is that. Um, you have to you have to make great work at the end of the day if it's saleable or not is really not your concern hopefully it will be and you'll live if it and sometimes it won't and then you know you sort of bang off and you wait until you're dead but it can't be done under the sort of commercial world kind of business world as she referred to it kind of um uh, banner it can't be done like that it doesn't happen like that. Um, it, you know, whether it's what you, whether what image you choose to work or what you know subject you choose, or what you know um, uh, modern you choose, all those sort of things are not really down to, uh, or shouldn't be down to the criteria of, of will it sell or not. Uh, and it's nothing to do with, you know, the sort of which she impl implied that it was a, I, you know, I was deluded basically, because uh, I didn't think it was about making money and. Um, um, but it's not that, you know, this amateur professional thing and, uh, you know, amateurs, like I said about that guy, that famous guy that said about the um, professionals, uh, amateurs wait for inspiration, professionals do it. That That's ludicrous. That's silly. That's some, that's somebody who's not really thought, giving it much thought. Um, the, if, if, you, if you unleash your creativity to, to do whatever, it, to you know, manifest in whatever way, it needs no inspiration. It just needs fulfilling. It needs to be done, um, and that and that will only happen if you've got away from the stupid mindsets of, you know, I need to be inspired or or um, you know, it's um, 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 this is what people want kind of attitude. Um, you can't do that. You can't have that. It will just stop you from. And you will be one of these, these people that thinks it's all about inspiration, and it's clearly not about inspiration. It's more about just doing it it's just sitting in front of something with a brush or a crayon or a pencil or a whatever and just doing it um that's what it's about and and as soon as you realize that the floodgates honestly floodgates when you when you do that and that's and that's the thing that these people don't understand so they're going to write these articles about the deluded artists that don't think that they're part of the art world or or that there's a business to all this and if they don't understand it then they are deluded and all the rest of it um these people don't get it they're not they're not artists they don't get it they don't really understand that we have to do this it's, there's, there's no two ways about it we have to do this it's it's like water creativity is like water um you just gotta let it flow and 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 if you don't you don't know what's going what damage you're doing i mean i i i think i psychologically this is why i'm so uh, vehement now <laughs> is because i the floodgates you know i built a, a dam for my creativity and, and it was dammed for 30 odd years and many people have got through the same thing you look at any of the comments on on the on what i do and you'll see lots of people say the same things and and the as soon as it was it's okay as soon as i gave myself permission to do it regardless which is the, the big thing regardless of whether people like it regardless of whether i like it um what, as soon as i gave myself permission to do that that's it's not stopped it's not stopped since october 2019 so every day it's happened 
and and that that's the um that's the truth of it that's what that's what you've got if you're in if you if this is what you want to do that's what's embedded within you you can't get away from that so so this idea that it's got to be in some way manifest within rules of somebody else within you know the the um the confines of a competition or, or whatever it might be so it might be judged as good or not or, or better than someone else you know some other artist if you if you confine yourself within those those uh, those walls it's just not going to be it's not you're going to be you're not going to find your true self doing that and that's and that's what this is about um creativity is unique your creativity is unique to you uh and, and it it's it's always been there no matter what age you are your creativity doesn't grow old. It's always been there. So all you've got to do is just open the play box and, and just do it. Um, and not get too bogged down by all this stuff. This is the thing. I mean, I'm, I kind of wander into these territories and think, you know, like the, the woman with the, um banging on about the artist of the year thing. And, and I, I think, Oh no, no, no. And I get sucked into it as well. And consequently you end up I'm ranting like I am. And uh, and this is the this is the problem with it. I I'm I kind of think everybody else has figured it out as well, but they haven't. Uh and that's the uh, um the difficulty for me. I, I think, well, everybody surely everybody else has thought about this. No, they haven't. They haven't thought about this. They haven't thought about it in the in the same way at all. Uh because for a lot of people fresh to this they don't know anything else they've never had time i mean I, I suppose in 30 years i thought about it a lot so that kind of um mulling over which is what probably happened is a long time to consider all the aspects of it it's a long time to you know it's a long apprenticeship it's 30 years but that's 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 got to be what's happened and what and the and the um the consequences are that i'm i'm very um anti any kind of uh, restrictions that, I'm, that might be placed on me so um, and if anybody comes to me i'm really i'm really um determined for them not to fall into this the traps that i did um and not to get bogged down by other people's definitions of what it is that they should do uh, the problem is that it gets but people you might be watching this and thinking you know it's all about the drawing it's not it's not about the drawing at all the drawing is just simply my the manifestation of my creativity in a particular way um it may be realistic it may not be realistic i mean there are some fabulous uh, portraits that are not realistic um it doesn't have to be realistic that's the that's the the truth is it doesn't have to be a portrait now that, there's a thing if i say to you it doesn't have to look like somebody it can never be a portrait can it but it can. There are lots of great portraits that don't have the, the realistic aspects and yet still look like the individual, the subject. But um, as I said, it, it can, you can look at what I do and think, and it's just about the production and um, and it's not, it's, it's so much more than just the production. But um, the reason why I do it the way I do is because of my mindset because of the way i think about what i'm doing that's that's the way that's the reason why it works i don't think it work if i didn't have this mindset i think if i didn't have this mindset i'll be back on doing the the illustrations i'll be back doing you know the which i've shown you many times but this stuff where it's um i don't know let me just get the uh... so if I, if I didn't have canvas just falling down if i didn't have the right mindset i'd be producing stuff like this which is fashion illustrations and which is what i did fashion illustrations and caricatures and and uh, wine bottle labels and uh, you know oh, and uh, other watercolor illustrations i'd be doing that if i didn't have the right mindset and most people think oh great that's what i want to do but the production thing is irrelevant the production thing for all of these was i want to make money that was the, the the primary motive for doing all of those things whether i like doing it or not didn't really matter um it's not you know it's all about the will it sell it was all about those kind of those kind of things but I, i'm that's not what it's about for me 
I'm not into whether it's sell or not. I mean, at the end of the day, maybe people would buy my portraits. Um, uh, and people say on here, you know, you'd make, you'd make a lot of money if you sell your portrait. I, I can't get into that because um, I, I'm too busy making portraits. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate now that I don't have to work because I'm retired. So and that alleviates everything. But in the in the few years leading up to this, I worked in factories, you know, and, and Amazon and all that. But um, but it's not it's not you know I'm, I'm I've never sort of succumbed to the idea of I'll do something to sell. Not since I've been back. I mean, when I was as I say when I was all those years ago doing it, it was about oh I'll do something to sell, but I feed my kids, you know, and all that kind of thing. But um, no, not anymore. But the problem was, and I don't know that that what what it did to me. I know what it did to me. Um, and I'm now, as I said, fortunate. I don't have to consider all those financial things, and uh, and I can just um, do what I want. But that I can see, I can see, literally see the the amazing kind of. Um, difference, the, 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 as if the somebody, as I said, lifted the, the floodgates, and um, and that the, it, that really upsets me. So that upsets me because I didn't experience that all those years ago, and I didn't experience that, you know, um, when I was uh, working. It was, certainly wasn't like that when I was working. Uh, but when people come to me and they're experiencing that, and I can, I can and I can help them. Uh, the problem is, the problem is that everybody that comes to this is going to be um, tainted by this idea that it's about um, conforming with the you know the rules by doing it like everybody else or meeting everyone's expectations or doing it exactly the same as other people or worse competing against or doing it better than someone else um, which is what competition is all about it's just better than um, and somebody judging it better than which is the worst thing um, but the as I say the people come to me with that terrible um, um hindrance and I, and I just want to help them i just want to say that it's, oh, it's okay it doesn't matter if if it's not as good as somebody else's or it doesn't look like somebody else's don't get don't get bogged down by the production side of it you know a lot of people get into that and it's a it's a it's a problem um that you can't see that the marks that you make and the way that you approach the portrait and all the rest of it are all down to your mindset and not down to whether or not you can handle the charcoal um and well whether you can handle the you know the the the, um, the tones or whatever they're not down to those things um it's 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 your mindset that's doing all this your mindset is telling you how um how it should be because it was I mean, if you've got this mindset that it has to be as good as somebody else's for instance every mark that you make you're considering it in comparison to somebody else how can that be right um you, you've got it's, it can't be compared to anything it can just happen which is which is what it should do it should just happen and they and then and then at the end of it when when the dust settles then you can look at it and say yeah i like that you know, and um, and that that's the thing. And people are not allowing themselves to do that. That's, lots of people are, are coming to me and, and uh, showing me what they're doing and all that. And I'm saying, yeah, but you're not allowing yourself. Is that really you? It looks too much like somebody else or or their mark making. They'll use language that other people use as well. That's a, that's a, a, a telltale sign that it has to be, you know, um, their... Um, hatching or whatever it might be and they and it's it just tells me that they've looked what either watched too many youtube videos or or uh or they've been to some too many of these these uh, the weekend workshop things you know <laughs> so um but it, it's it, why I, I mean as i say this was triggered by that woman sort of having a go she since blocked me and, and said that and uh, i want to continue with the conversation i think she sort of knew that it was my thing and i was going to tear it to shreds but you know it's um I, I don't know it's it's a a thing that's really important that nobody discusses that's what i think i uh, this idea that um, um there is some standards which we have to attain and uh, and uh, and routes we must take in order to be successful and all that kind of thing and and that's uh, it's just nonsense honestly there are stronger words i could use but obviously um Live before the watershed, I think. And, uh, um, yeah, so, as I said, people would think that it's looking at this, it's just about the drawing. And it's about everything else. 
It's about everything but the drawing. That's the truth of it. So you've got to you've got to understand that. And um, and trust me, if you have the right mindset, there is no stopping you. You know, there is no stopping what there's no te telling what you are capable of doing if you have the right mindset. So that's that's the, that's really my message. Forget about trying to do it to sell. Forget about trying to do it to please people or to be better than somebody else. Which is, if if that's your uh, if that's your motives, then shame on you. But um, but really, it's 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 all about your personal creative expression, and um, and I know it's just drawing portraits, but but it's it's much more than that. It just happens that I I mean, if I chose to do something else, I'd become a surrealist. Although I do quite fancy doing that. Um, and I'm, and I'm, you know, a, a kind of um, a floating rotor, if you like, in that respect. I'm, I'm, I can't see why an artist can't be a realist one day and a hyper realist the next, and then a surrealist the next. I, I think that's, you know, perfectly acceptable to cross the divide of all the political parties. And uh, but I, uh, um, it just so happens that I, I like trying faces. Um, it's just the thing. <laughs> so my wife says to me, why do you keep drawing faces? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just like drawing faces. All right. <laughs> I don't get it. You see, even I've got critics all the time. Everybody's a critic, aren't they? But I just like drawing faces. Um, and I like the idea of helping people to experience, you know, what it is to um, to create a face, to draw a face, you know, because it's a, it's, a, it's a special thing, drawing faces. Um it's not. It's not like your normal kind of, you know, spar on a stick, you know, spar on a log kind of thing. It's a, drawing faces is something else. Requires a, a much more um, um, emotional approach to uh, to doing it, and uh, which is which is again, I like that because um, I like you know when I get when I start drawing when I start sit down drawing these I, I'm excited before I start I'm a bit like a racehorse you've seen the racehorses and the traps and they're all getting all lathered up that's me I'm all I'm all excited about doing it so uh, but and I'm excited every time I do it which is which is crazy you know I'm 67 and I'm I get excited doing doing this I've never experienced this in all my life but you know, in this level of intensity. I mean, obviously, when I was working as a designer and, I, and, I, and we had some great projects and, and great customers and clients, it was it was exciting, you know, to do the pictures and put forward ideas and all that. Um, it was difficult because there's, you know, there's people involved. So it's, it's always difficult when there are people involved. But, um, but I quickly became, you know, the guy in charge, so I didn't have to succumb to the team mentality you know the, the herd thinking <laughs> oh, I didn't so my rule my law <laughs> my rule my my word was law kind of thing but um but now nothing like this nothing in this kind of um um you know the adrenaline and the kind of thing that i get with this and i suppose some of it's to do with doing this online as well because you always kind of uh, come at this with a bit of a trepidation and um, there's a great temptation to draw uh, the you know the stalwart of uh, of charcoal subjects you know the, the the bearded man the old crusty old men as we call them um, because it's they're easy to draw <laughs> so, to, so when you see the, the as I said before in many of these if you see the the uh, the charcoal masters drawing the old men you know it's easy to draw uh, crusty old men you know there's so many things that you can um, uh, get away with when you're drawing up crusty old men it's not it's not as it's not as accurate as it needs to be you know like when you're drawing you know beautiful females it's a different kettle of fish every line kind of matters in in some respect not not necessarily all of them but it's it's a different thing but uh, so when i do these it, there's a great temptation to sort of guarantee an outcome by saying, oh i draw some crusty old men even drawing young bearded old men is a uh, young men is a, a a kind of a cop out um when I'm trying to do them within a time, I mean, I'd rather draw, you know, whatever it, whatever takes me fancy, but rather than putting some criteria on it, but um, within a given time, I'm, what's, what's this? 39 minutes. This is long enough for a, for do a drawing, you know. Um, and I would drawing, and I want it to be a reasonable drawing. I want it to be one of those quick smudges and all that kind of thing. I want it to still be about lines and uh, and textures and things and uh, and tones and things. But as I said, this is. Um, 
uh, from from a point of view of, of people watching this now and thinking, oh, it's all about the drawing. You may have come to it thinking about it, it's all about the drawing. It's not. You know, it's not about the drawing at all. Um, it's about having the right mindset. And part of having the right mindset is realising that it's not about doing it for the money. And as I said, you get paid for what you do. That's what that's perfectly fine. But you don't do it with the intention of getting paid for what you're doing, if that if that doesn't contradict. Um, but it's, it is that. Um, and a lot of people, this is why I think a lot of people when they retire will, will go, come to doing this because all of a sudden they don't need to do it for the money. And and you, I've seen some great people, um, you know, artists that have retired and come to this. And my, my, I, I, a while ago I did a, a lesson with somebody and uh, they were in the 90s and they could paint. They could really paint. Not painted all their lives. They just took to it when they were retired, you know. And I said to him, uh, it's a shame that you didn't do this when you were younger, you know, because he's, he's 90. There's not much time left, is there? So, and that's the problem. You know, we, we, you know, we have to earn money. We have to live. We have to feed the kids and pay the mortgage. So, and because art's not respected, it's not thought of as a, as a career choice or a job, um, we don't get paid what we're worth. So, there's that as aspect to it as well. So if you if you're doing it for the money, chances are you won't get enough for doing it. You know, so there's, there's all kinds of problems with with a, a money um, um, driven attitude to to making art. You know, and, or even publicity. You know, seeking publicity. That's another thing people will do. And as I mentioned him earlier, but people like Damien Hurst were grand masters of of the uh, publicity, and um, and that's primarily how he makes. You know the, the the what he does relevant, um, but there's there's again it, it affects what he does. I mean, look at what look at the work he does. Like it like it alone, he's he's a clever man, as is Tracy Emin. Not a man, but obviously he's very clever. But I don't know. I, I'm I'm a simple I'm a simple man. I just want to I just want to make po I want to draw faces. That's what I do. I draw keeping it nice. I want to draw faces, not really about portraits it's, it is about portraits obviously but I, I like drawing faces i like drawing people i like capturing them um and that that's it it's nothing more complicated than that so in terms of publicity i don't somebody said to me if you marketed yourself you could make you could make a good living at it and i said i don't want to i don't want to make a good living at it um i did, i was a computer programmer for god knows how long making a good living at it i don't want to and i don't want to I don't want to need to. I don't need to do it doing this anymore. So it was, you know, again, people who don't know, and I think that's probably the the problem with say this individual that commented on the, the game show. You know, it was um, somebody who hadn't given it much thought. She may have think thought she was an artist, but I don't think she's given it much thought. She can't be. I mean, a real artist wouldn't say the things she said. But um, as I said, it's not about this. It's not about the doing. Um, it's about something much greater than the doing um yeah and i'm done anyway so a bit of a ramble a bit of a rant um but uh i think i've got the uh, i think i've covered i think i've covered all bases um as to use another um sporting vernacular but uh i uh i just you know i just wanted to uh um so i'm just thinking it's 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 when i, when I sometimes when i'm thinking the mouthpiece doesn't work i can't sometimes i can't double task so uh, i asked to stop and they say well, yeah maybe sort of suddenly stop midstream then that's what's happening the i haven't got enough bandwidth so again you to use a different euphemism to do with computers but anyway um yeah so recap on the doing thing um for those of you who just think it's about the doing, um, it's identify your anchors. One, two, three, identify your anchors. It's not triangulation. It's learning to see between three points. You can do it with two points if you're really smart, but most of us can't. I can't. Um, I need the third dot, the one in the middle, to give the other one you know some context um and it gives a a three a, another you know a third measure you know from there to there and from there to there and from there to there and from there to there so so and then there there and there so there's there's 
you know, third sort of dimension to them, your your visual assessment. Um, and then once the, the dots are in place, find the shapes, find the shapes, look for the shapes, find the shapes. Once the shapes are anchored to these dots, now the dots can be that, that, and that, or they can be that, that, and that. They can be that, that, and that. There can be any three dots that you can see, but they're not, they shouldn't be confused with other things. This is not, this is just simply a point that you're identifying. Don't think of it in terms of, oh, that's the edge of the hair or whatever. This is not what this is about. This is just finding simple um, points in which you can then attach things to. So like markers in the sand, that's all it is. And then once you go past the the, uh, the dots side of things, I say you're into the into the shapes. So find the shapes in relation to uh, where the dots are. So if I say that that is one dot there, that all, all, it gives me one particular shape there, which is that one. But from that, it also gives me um, the... Uh, the width to the ear, for instance, it also gives me alignments. That's another thing you need to worry about. Alignments are uh, vertical and horizontal related. Don't do the diagonals because that's like I've got a client that, uh, sorry, client back in work mode. I've got a, cust a, a, a student that talks in um, in terms of tilts. You know, when a head's slightly an angle, he'll talk tilts, and that's like, uh, and I always I found get I can't get the tilt. He'll say I can't get the tilt, and um, it's a dangerous thing. That is, it's, it's worse than trying to work out the angles. You know that one, that one. Oh, there's a slight angle there, and a slight angle there. Everything. Let me get a rule, and I'll show you. So everything relates to the horizontal. There's the horizontal. The constant horizontal you've got is the top of your paper. Everything relates to the horizontal. So where? Look at that now. You can see that the bottom of his left eye, right, is is relating to the the bag under the right eye. So it's not, and the same with the the top of the the top of the the, the left eye is slightly lower horizontally than the right eye. And immediately, if I follow those horizontal relationships, I immediately I've got the right tilt, and it works on everything. So it doesn't. And it's always going to be vertical. It always has to be horizontal. Never this or this. Uh, because you're just going to just have a whale of a time trying to get things right when you're doing that kind of stuff. Um, just it has to be that the only thing, only constants you've got, and they're so close to where you're working that you can make the comparisons. So if you draw a line down the side of the face that's horizontal, that's vertical rather, how far off vertical is the, are the elements of the face? You can see how far off vertical they are. So if the vertical's there, Right, I can see that it's that far off vertical there, and it's that far off vertical there, and it's that far off vertical there. So all of a sudden, join the dots. I mean, you don't have to draw them; you can just you can visualize them. And all of a sudden, you've got the tilt of the face, um, and that and that's it. So um, the distance of things is the real important one. So the relationships of things is the real important one, and then the the other one is the the um, the, the alignments and the alignments of things. So once you've got past dot 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 anchor the shapes to the dots then it's the tones use the tones early on don't don't be trying to make the tones straight away use the tones early on to define the shapes define the shapes with tones so you define the shape with tones you define the whole of the eye socket with a tone use the use tone to do that it'll just help you to see better because it gives you a a a unit a block if you like of of something to see rather than it just being an outline outlines take a different kind of drawing um more skilled more practiced um and and a different mindset really because you're looking for the shapes of things literal shapes of things um and you see it all the time people do like sort of outlines of the shadow on the on the cheek there and the outline of that and then the you'll see that all the time and um great skill all i can say with that is great skill prepare to practice is probably what i'd say with that but for me practice there's no such thing as practice there's just making art and you get better or you get worse or whatever but that's practice to me it's just doing it's practice um practice is something that you know it's not real it's just something you do and with the hope that one day you'll be able to do it properly you know it's that kind of thing whereas if you're doing it for real you're doing it for real and that's the um, that's the beauty of it. It's not a um, it's no confines. This is the reason why I don't draw the same thing twice um, because I'm doing it for real every time. This is no mucking about. This is this is me doing it for real. 
and and I think that that and I think that that mindset that's another part of the mindset I think that attitude and that mindset is what made you know me so productive because I I went to um, I went from nothing really I didn't do any portraits uh, to doing three four five a day um I mean I mean obviously I was excited because I'd made some charcoal and <laughs> which is by the way it's hazel wood charcoal which I make myself and um and 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 just dodgy cheap cartridge so don't go out and rush and buy decent stuff um uh people say you know you should buy decent stuff and you should fix it properly and all that and then you know I kind of think well I I'm not going to be in anybody's art collection and I'm not going to be in any museums and all the rest of it so in the meantime because I can't afford to go out and buy lots of fancy paper I'm just going to draw you know and uh, and I'll get good at it and then maybe when somebody decides that they want to buy something from me then I will do it on some decent paper and I'll fix it with proper fixer but in the meantime I'm just having a ball you know I'm just having a ball and getting getting my creative juices flying and you know, and that's it. And I'm not concerned about whether or not it'll sell or whatever, or whether people like it. I mean, the, the other thing as well is that the like thing, you know, don't care what people think about your work. It, does, it doesn't matter. You know, they've got their own criteria. It's probably completely different to yours, but don't care what they think. That's the worst. That's probably one of the, that's worse than doing it to make money. Thinking, you know, caring what other people think. Uh, you can't. You can't care. You can't care what other people think. Um, and that's a contradiction when you do portraits, obviously. But um, um, you make a portrait when you're caring. This is that everybody says, oh, don't do commissions. because too stressful. <laughs> it is because you care what they do, what they, what they think about it. Do your thing. Capture that face. Connect with their essence. And I guarantee they'll prefer that to anything that you contrive in order to meet their uh, your their uh, um, what you suspect are their expectations. I guarantee you produce something that far greater, and uh, and that's that's the truth of it. But people get bogged down by that. Again, it's it's back to this, you know, how it should be mentality. Um, anyway, um, as I said, back to the the doing thing. Um, charcoal for me is a mucky medium, and and I mean that in all kinds of senses. Not necessarily, you know, on on your hands, and I don't make a lot of dust with this either. But in the way that it you can see it's got that body because it has the the grittiness about it. Um, I mean, obviously, subjects again, which is why we cho choose old you know, crusty old men. But some subjects suit the charcoal and the, and the way it behaves. Um, and um, I I kind of embrace that when I can. Um, and this in this instance, this is one of those those situations. Um, but it keeps it like a. Um, a vibrance um it's just there's just something that you know it is charcoal it hasn't got that finicky kind of feel that you get with with graphite but it's it's uh, perfectly blended and all that kind of thing you can you can be perfectly blended with with charcoal and, and people do it all the time there's some amazing examples of that um i try not to look at them to be quite honest because because it kind of it's a bit like uh, poison to me. I see things like that, and you know, that, um, that garlic to a vampire, and I, and I think, oh, ooh. And I break out into a cold sweat, and I think, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't fall into that that trap of um, this is how it should be done, kind of thing. Um, because I can't help but you can't help but like it. I mean, as I said, some of them are just daggeringly good, and uh, and you think, oh, and I never sort of consider the amount of time that some of the people that these things take. You know, and they say these intricate um, um, graphite drawings or or um, or, or um, charcoal, and they just they must have taken months of work, um, and that would just drive me, you know, off my nut if I had to sort of draw something for months on end. But people do it, you know. There's a woman on on on. Um, uh, Instagram that I see, and she'll spend ten hours just drawing a hairline, or the, or the, or the pores on her cheek, or on the back of her hand, and I think, like, oh God, these they must have patience of of Job or whatever it's, whatever it is. I can't imagine. I might, I'd be just I fall asleep. Honestly, I would just fall asleep doing that. Um, if I couldn't do it within an hour, <laughs> like these, I couldn't do them within an hour. 
then then it's too long. It's, it's taking too long, and uh, and I want to move on to do something. It's that another reason why I do so many drawings, is because I get bored easily. So and I'm impatient and I'm lazy and I've said all this before, but it's true. It's, that's exactly why um, I do them so quickly because I'm um, I want to do like today. I'm going to do three or four today. I might paint, but I'm um, I'm missing the charcoal, so I, I might just do a load of charcoals. Um, but that's just that's just me. Um, and again, it's still my mindset that makes that happen. It's not about um, anything particular. You know, it's not about my skills. My skills have just got better because I keep doing it. That's it. Um, it's not because I'm gifted and, and talented and all that sort of thing. I just do it a lot, and uh, and I get better at it. And that's it. So all this thing about oh, I have not got the. T I wish I had your talent and all. It's rubbish. It's just honestly, it's just a nonsense thing. Just do it. Just do it. Don't try and do it like anybody else. Just do it like, you know, in a way that is your own essence, your own expression. That's because that's all it's about at the end of the day. It's just about you. So don't get bogged down by somebody else's idea of what it should be, which is, again, back to the back to the uh, competition and back to the, the idea of doing it for money. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because I'm faffing around with this tie. So... Um, uh, but like I say, uh, when it gets to a certain level, when it gets to a certain stage, you will find that um, it becomes more about the the tones than the, um, well, I'll say drawing, but but it, it's uh, tones are drawing. So, but it's, it's, it is more about how you manipulate the tones. Um, and that's when having decent charcoal is a big, a big plus because if the charcoal doesn't flow if it doesn't make marks without any effort if it doesn't leave a certain you know it doesn't give you a range of densities and doesn't leave a certain level of density when it's when it's only gliding across the, the surface if it doesn't do any of those things then then you're going to struggle you're going to be expecting it to do something because here at this moment i need to sort of at the moment i need to lighten this this beard here so um but if I if I'm expecting the charcoal to apply a certain level of tone and it won't because it won't it's not soft or hard or whatever whatever description the charcoal charcoal should have, then it makes it an awful lot harder, and the tones determine the accuracy of your drawings. So so it's the tone that makes the drawing work basically. So if if you're inaccurate in the way that you've positioned your dots and figured out your shapes, <clears throat> as you apply the tones to give those shapes form if it's not right it will you'll be able to tell which is another reason why my drawings tend to be progressive you know i progressively draw the shape progressively work the face into uh, into its accuracy because it's the only way for me because in the early stages uh, it's completely inaccurate it's come it's a bit like this we did this we're doing oil this week so we're doing an oil portrait this week so i, I drew it on friday but i never paint and draw the same thing so I did this last night as part one of the lesson. This was the first, we're doing three lessons. This is the first lesson. So I drew this in with paint in uh, burnt umber. But I don't normally go this far, but I needed to express to the students that drawing is the key to making a painting. So drawing at this level uh, quickly um, in burnt umber um, is in, in a way where people should start if they're, thinking about paint because you can't help but paint that correctly and anything that's wrong on that which is a nice thing about it can be quickly changed when you apply the color that's the whole point of doing this it's not really a gris eye but people talk about this kind of thing as a gris eye but it's not um it's just the foundations of the port of the painting a, a drawing if you like at this stage people actually think this is the drawing this is not this is the part that that will get paint all over it so um that is my kind of approach it's it's this progressive it will ultimately end up where i need it to be that's my approach so again it's a mindset thing um i don't want it right first time i don't want it right straight away i'm going to get there i'm going to the thing is going to evolve in front of me and that's that's how i work so as i said i will leave it to that it's just an hour which is long enough and uh hopefully i've <sighs> kind of told you what i think about the the doing it for money thing and why it's a bad thing and and hopefully you'll understand that you know it's not a bad thing to get paid for what you do but it's a bad thing to do it to get paid that's what i'm saying so i'll catch you in the next one <laughs>
can't, I can't move my studio for drawings and paintings, I tell you. <laughs>